say in that true coat, you don't get it, you get oxidation problems. It'll cost you a heck of a lot more than $500. You're sitting there, you're, you're talking in circles, you're talking like we didn't go over this already. Yeah, but this true coat. We had a deal here for 19.5. You sat there and darned if you didn't tell me you'd get me this car, these options, without the sealant for 19.5. All right, I'm not saying I didn't. You called me 20 minutes ago and said you had it ready to make delivery. It says, come on down and get it. And, 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 and here you are and you're wasting my time and my wife's time and... Welcome back to Greenlight Cinema, everyone. It's good to have you guys back. Well, it doesn't look like there's going to be any new movies out for a while, and it makes it a little hard for me as a critic. So, uh, I decided to go back and watch Fargo. I mean, Wonder Woman isn't going to come out till October 2nd, and uh, Black Widow maybe November uh, the 6th, I believe. Will I even be alive then? Or any of us? So, what do I do? I go back, and I look through movies, and terrible movies. Well, I mean good movies. This one, eh. Let's talk about Fargo. I don't think I've ever done that on this show. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah. You yeah, know, there's a sign. I made that sign when I did uh, season two. And if you haven't seen my review for that, you should check them out. They are pretty tab. Good, good. They're good. No, it's funny. You get to see me uh, kind of do like pretty good to like where I'm at now, which is I'm not sure if that's an improvement. Anyway, let's talk about Fargo. I'm uh, Jerry Lindegard. You got the car? You bet. Brand new burnt umber Sierra. You want your own wife kidnapped. Her dad, he's real well off. So why don't you just ask him for the money? Ah! See, these are personal matters. Oh, I got the state looking for a Sierra with a tag starting DLR. I'm not sure that I agree with you 100% on your police work there, Lou. I think that vehicle there probably had dealer plates. Jeez. DLR. <laughs> <laughs> Do mind if I sit down? Trying quite a load here. Where's Jerry? Got your damn money. Now, where's my daughter? What do you fellas got yourself mixed up in? Police! Hello. Ah! Is there anything else you can tell me about him? He wasn't circumcised. Oh, yeah? Well, now, let's talk about Fargo. It's like comfort food for the soul, right? Anyway, uh, so, yeah... I've watched this movie maybe three or four times in my entire life. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of it, but there are some qualities to it. And, you know, you sit back and you watch a movie like this, and you think to yourself, how did this movie ever uh, become the series that, like, we as Fargo fans just absolutely love? Because... I am a little lost on it because it is a, it's a lot like season three and that's where season three is going to come into this. Uh, the characters and the whole plot, well, there's not much of a plot. It, both of season, well, I'll look into our characters. We have uh, Marge Gunderson, we have, um, and her husband, Norm, we have uh, Jerry and Jean and uh, their son, Scotty which they feel like more of the main characters than actual our protagonist does. And I feel like our protagonist should be the main character. So it's kind of funny to have that core, the, those two dynamics. But that is Fargo. There's always never really a clear cut of who's good or bad, you know. Uh, but right away, though, one thing you can say about season one is we know right away, Lord Malvo, he's bad. I believe that he's even trying to portray uh, the devil like and some qualities, uh, just some of the lines he says. He just has a real mean presence to him. Because some roads you shouldn't go down. Because maps used to say there'd be dragons here. Now they don't. Oh, well, you know, you don't want to mess with this character. And some of the stuff he says is funny. But that's the one thing about this movie I, find, I get a little lost on, is I find myself laughing a lot more with this and a lot of scenes than I do uh, watching the series on FX. Uh, you know, but here's also a thing with me, too. I'm not a big Coen Brothers fan. Now, I know the Coens are to, they work with uh, Noah Haley to some degree on the series, 
But, like, that's the thing. I like Noah Haley's interpretation of what uh, he's done with Fargo in the series. Because a lot of the movie does feel like uh, parts of the series that we've seen before. Uh, there's, like, little... Like, I like where it tells the locations. That reminds me of season two. Because season two was always, like, you know, cutting away to, like, Laverne, Minnesota. Or then it would show uh, Fargo, North Dakota. Things like that. And I kind of like that. I don't know. I'm one of these people, I'm, you know, in the audience, and I, I want to know where we're at. Where, where are we at with the story? Where are we at location-wise? Uh, and then, you know, a lot of the, the Jerry Lundergaard character, of course, is Lester Nygaard. But the thing about it was so funny, he also reminds me a lot of Ray Stussy. Because he's like your underdog that you really don't want to root for. And then, let me cut right into season three on this. Season three is so bizarre, and a lot of people can't relate to it. And it's an odd story because, you know, normally our underdog character, like Ray, is the person we should be rooting for. But Ray's kind of stubborn and just kind of like, I don't know, with the even, and spoilers right here, with the whole, you know, stamp thing, when Emmett's trying to make things right. You know, the rich brother that should be kind of like, you know, show off he with his money, which I guess he isn't to some degree, but in a lot of ways he isn't. I felt like, uh, so, you know, he's trying to like, okay, you know, let's bygones, you know? And he's like, well, you're not giving it to me, you know? And we got this whole thing uh, with Emmett and Ray. And I found myself more interested in Emmett's character than I did Ray. I, like, spoilers, when Ray's dead, when he gets killed, I'm, I feel something, but I almost feel almost a little nothing. But, you know, Emmett has this guilt. He cares. He's got, like, plans. He's gotten to a bad deal. And here's the correlation between the two. Let's go to the opening scene of uh, Fargo, the movie. Well, after we see Steve Buscemi and the other drifter. And when Jerry's with Gene talking to his father-in-law, and we see, you know, his son, their son Scotty or whatever... They're talking about a lot. And it's funny. Yes, the word lot. It's a lot. And he said, yeah, that's a lot of money for a lot. And, you know, we got this little thing going on. I made me laugh a whole lot that one scene. But here's the interesting thing. Now, let's think back to Fargo season three. Uh, Emmett, um, spoilers, he, like, uh, I'll stop saying spoilers because we've all seen this stuff by now. And if you haven't, then you need to go check it out. I believe, which I've already said a little bit, that Emmett, you know, he, after their dad passed away, Ray got the Corvette, uh, and Emmett starts selling his stamps, gets a name. I'm, I'm guessing Jerry's seen Emmett Stussy, Lots Incorporated. You know, the guy, because we never, we don't know where Jerry got this motivation to want to get Lots. We don't even know, it, the story is just so kind of like, it's thrown at you. It's like, we're in Vargo, North Dakota, opening scene. We get introduced to a fairly young uh, William H. Macy, um, who, and he's uh, playing Jerry Lund Lundergaard. And we get Steve Buscemi and Drifter Guy, and they're all, you know, talking about the plans or whatever. Also, a Native American uh, that's connected them from Fargo, kind of like our Hansi Dent in season two. Um, but this guy, Chef... Um, Blackfoot. It's a lot like uh, the Drifters from season one. Uh, their, I've called it their surrogate father, you know, Hansi Dent, you know, and other. It, it's very neat. It's a little bit of correlations there. But mostly with season three. And I believe that this all ties in. This is all going to tie in. And I even have a theory with season four that season four is going to be our origin story for Fargo. Where it all started, where it all came from. Possibly it didn't even start in Minnesota. Because we see in season four, in the tra I'm really jumping ahead now. And we see in the trailer, real, you know, I'm going to mention this real quick. They're not in Minnesota. It's going to take place. And you can look it up. It, uh, it's going to be in um, Missouri. It's about like Kansas City or whatever. Maybe, the, you know, later in the season, we're going to see them make their way up to Minnesota. And then we get, you know all the stories kind of connect and together and uh, because season two uh goes in a little into the 50s 1951 we see Dieter Gerhardt and season four is going to be in 1950 I'm sorry I'm jumping timelines all over the place but I have to just get this out 
uh, and what I've been thinking lately about Fargo. But, you know, I want to, and this is also a review for the movie as well, not just like a theory thing. But, uh, yeah, so, you know, they get, uh, he's, Jerry's got this plan or whatever that we don't really know very well as an audience. He wants lots. And his wife kidnapped. And money, possibly. But what really I get lost on, and it's like Gloria Burgle uh, with Marge Gunderson, you know. Um, I'm not sure when we got to see Gloria. I know it went right away, but right away we uh, see a lot of things that's going on already. And like 36 minutes into the film, then we start seeing Marge Gunderson. And it's like, she might have had like... I feel like if she is, she is the protagonist, but she's supposed to be our main character. She had like hardly no lines at all. We mostly just see her eating or either driving. It, it, you know, she talks a little bit, you know, just kind of like the, oh yeah. That's one thing I want to get on this. The movie's almost annoying. Like it's like mocking like the minute, I'm not from Minnesota, but like the whole thing feels a lot exagger, very exaggerated. The yeah. Yeah, like they don't really do that a lot in the series. Like, you know, every once in a while you might hear someone say, yeah, but it's like, that was just like an ongoing annoyance. It's like, oh gosh, it's like, is this supposed to be a, it feels like a parody almost of uh, the series. Uh, like, like I said, I found myself laughing more than I did like interested. But, uh, you know, going back, talking about this Fargo film, it's got its it's got its moments. Uh, it was pretty good, you know, on some places. Uh, I like the last part of the movie though, uh, where uh, they <laughs> capture Jerry. It looks like an episode of Cops. Bill, I'm late. No. Ah! 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 <laughs> Cinematography for this completely flips and changes and it's no longer like a movie. It looks like an episode of Cops because like you got like shaky cam going on with a little bit of uh it just looks like an episode of cops is the most wild thing like and there's like so many like weird like fadeaways and cut twos in this movie like it's very different from the series but very similar to the series uh that father-in-law where did he come from because he couldn't have been from minnesota gene's father like I don't know, but here all of a sudden we see just violence and murder out of nowhere. Or not murder, but it's just like, she's just watching the TV, calm as she can be, in this chill setting. And then all of a sudden, like, the our robbers, like, start attacking her. It's like, oh my gosh! And you're like, and poor her, she's like kind of bumbling and not very, I guess, smart. And she kind of gets herself caught, like, pretty easy. But, like, I think it's funny that one guy that's, like, concerned about it, he got his finger bit. It's like he's trying to, like, disinfect it or put medicine on it or something. But it's like, I don't know. He's like, I'm not even worried about this. But, like, you get the, and I'm not trying to sound like a broken record, but we, I've mentioned this in, when I was doing the review for season two. The little scene with uh, the, her tied to the cabin and, like, with the thing over her head, just like Dodd in season two. A lot of repeated themes, but it, you know, it's its own story, it's interesting, but, uh, I think it's cool that they, uh, you know, I don't know if anyone talks about this a lot, but the thing with season one in this movie, how that briefcase of money, Steve Buscemi, the altercation in that lot, in that parking lot, um, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff with lots in Fargo, but, um, yeah, that one thing with that, you, you get, uh, the little scene there, uh, the altercation. Steve Buscemi has that, uh, all that money and uh, he buries it or whatever and then, you know, um, Stavros Milos finds it and then is the supermarket king of Minnesota uh, years later. But I think that's just a neat little tie-in and cor correlation, you know, with this. So I believe this film really, you know, works as its own thing, but it also kind of does like, hey, it'll pique your interest a little bit because it's got a little bit of season one in it 
and I believe it's got a lot of season three in it. I really believe Emmett was uh, the reason maybe for uh, Jerry's bad decision of getting uh, of uh, getting Gene taken and then eventually killed and. Uh, but, uh, yeah, you know, as far as films go, you know, this film's only an hour long and so minutes. And, like, you know, you don't see Marge Gunderson, like I said, till 36 minutes. It just doesn't seem like she's our character that we should be rooting for. But at the same time, you're glad that she's alive because she's carrying, you know, a baby and everything. But it, it's a little bit, I don't know, you got Molly and Lou. And they were just so, like, up in it, you know, and very made the... the, the they made their like situation so intensified and very interesting and us as the audience we were like into it we like want to know what they want we want to do with everything they're doing you know like come on Lou fight them people you can get back in you know North Dakota and South Dakota don't let them you know take you down like that you know and then with Molly you know don't you know throw away this evidence keep on building it you know you'll get Lauren you know the whole time but like with Marge we just see her eating or either driving I don't know I give the film, um, I'm just, you know, grading it as me being my movie critic self, I give it a, a B minus because somehow it did strike some type of cult thing to where people do like it. I mean, you go back and you watch it, you enjoy uh, watching William H. Macy. I mean, I'm a fan of his in some aspect. I'm not seeing a lot of Shameless. I know he does that show, but you know, it's funny to see him and he does a real good Minnesotan accent. He's real good in this. And uh, I especially love the scene where he's like cleaning or he's trying to fix his uh, windshield and he just like <laughs> starts attacking it and then he has to go back doing it. It's just the funny mundane life of Minnesota, I guess. But uh, that's uh, my review for the film. And uh, I don't know. I don't have a whole lot else to say about this movie other than, you know, maybe you should check it out. It's pretty good. And it kind of, like, you know, has a few tie-ins and correlations and makes you feel like, huh, oh, I kind of understand the series kind of a little bit because the series is so good. It's like almost so good it's out of nowhere, like lightning in a bottle. That's my review for this film, man. I hope that you guys enjoyed it in all my perspectives and a little bit of theories. Uh, and if you guys haven't already, please like and subscribe to my channel. Uh, thank you for watching. Bye.